also like the fact that social media can take place regardless of time and geography. So somebody can have a, plaint, a complaint at 3 o'clock in the morning, and if I've got a place at my website or on my Facebook or a survey that goes out or whatever, and that's when their schedule is, and I look at it the next morning, we're still having an interactive dialogue. They can be anywhere in the world at any time of day, and we can have this, this conversation that takes place. And so I think that's kind of important. So I wanted to ask everybody in the group for their opinion. Should I share the exact same content across all my social media channels? Do I write the same thing on Twitter and then I copy and I paste that onto Facebook and I stick it on LinkedIn and I, and I put it out there on, on, on different conversations? How do you guys go about doing that? <coughs> Sorry? Okay. So Hootsuite. So if I use Hootsuite, that, that would be the tool that I'd use to publish. Do I say the exact same thing? Yes. I'm a lay person and therefore don't know much about what I'm talking about. Uh, but I will say this. Can you this. take the microphone away from me? No. <laughs> I, I will say this. Um, I would imagine you'd want to uh, communicate uh, to the profile of the audience that you're, uh, that you're targeting. So I would imagine the message would need to be massaged. So thoughts on that. If, if, if a person wants to consume information on Twitter, are they the same? Do they want to read things the same way as they would read them in a blog post? No. No. The answer's got to be no, right? People, I think, that want to consume information on Twitter want to go, mm, 140 characters, I get the gist of it. You know, and, and you don't need to use 140 if you don't have to because I'm in a hurry. Who uses Twitter as their primary means of consuming information on businesses? Not one person. I don't either. Um, that's an interesting dialogue. Mike, what do, you, do you, a lot of people you think use Twitter as their sole means to consume information? I think there's a type of person that does. Uh, I think there's a demographic that does. Not us. Uh, <laughs> you know, I would say that for me, uh, I get a much larger volume of information through Twitter. I mean, one of the ways I use it is like as a news feeder. Right. Um, but I think I'm probably a more, Twitter, of all these things that we talk about, Twitter's the weirdest one. It's the hardest one to understand. And so I'm probably a little more sophisticated of a user than 90% okay. of the people in the room. And you would uh, say if you did start using it, it would be more to just kind of consume and say, okay, I get the gist of what's going on here. Yeah, I mean, it's this is timely so, information yeah. coming at me, so I use it like a newsreader kind of thing. Yeah. Okay, so very good. John? The one area that I do use Twitter in to monitor business is to spy on my competition. I set up searches to find out what people are saying about them. What that does is it not only gives me insight about what my competitors are not doing correctly, but it also tells me where the pain points are in my market. What are those areas that we can resolve that no one else in our industry is? And it's probably faster con to consume that information on Twitter than it would be to monitor blogs or something, because you would have to... Twitter forces me, if I'm, if I'm using Twitter well, to get to the point very quickly, so you get to see very fast, hey, here's what's going on in a sentence, as opposed to reading hundreds of blog posts. Yeah. Hundreds of 140 word statements yeah. is a lot faster probably to get the gist of something, right? And we also get to see what your competition is doing right. Right, right. What are their customers excited about and what are they sharing on Twitter? What are they tweeting? What makes them happy? You know, and, and that would be something. What really makes your customers happy? Uh, everybody kind of has a product that can be commoditized to some extent today. Can I go buy the same product or the same similar type service from somebody else in the market space? And, and for most of us, the answer is probably, you know? Uh, and so what do customers really like and what would cause them to tweet and what might we take a look at doing, I think would be kind of a neat idea. Who in here uses Facebook to keep up with most of their information? Okay, few people, very good. Um, who in here sets up uh, RSS feeds to go out there and read industry blogs and things like that? Okay, 
uh, even more people. Uh, and then Google Alerts, I'm not going to throw out because that's not really a type of medium. That is, that is an aggregator of those different types of medium. So I, I guess what I wanted to kind of say is I think as you're creating messaging, you've got more leeway to write more. Twitter's probably the, the shortest and then it expands out from there. But I do agree that you should always think about who the audience is, what they want to get from that specific medium and what message you want to get across and change that message based on the medium that you're writing for and probably the desired result that you want to achieve, right? Yeah. Well, if you're a small business with very limited resources, which most of us are, mm. um, you probably ought to pick one and get really good at it and then move on to the next one instead of trying to spread yourself too thin and master all of them because each one is complex in its own way. So let me ask you this. This is a great question, I think, because I thought of it. But, um, <laughs> but, but would it be better not to share your, to your point, would it be better to say, I only use, I don't know, pick one, you know, Twitter, or I only use Facebook, or I only use LinkedIn, and this is where you have to follow me, or would it be better to not do such a good job, but make your information available across those different channels so that your, so that your target audience could, could consume it there? I think you can have a presence on all of them. Okay. In terms of focusing your, your daily efforts or your weekly efforts, probably would behoove you to focus on one if you have limited resources. Very good. So I'm in here and I'm using this well, but I'm also making it available to these other places, but in, in quite a bit less time frame, right? Yeah. I agree. Yeah. Wouldn't it be good to know your target market? And if your target market's in one, that's where you want to put your emphasis. Okay, very good. And, uh, and there's appending services out there that you can take your email address list and you can send that in and you can append it and you can say, here's my emails. Are these people on Twitter? Are these people on Facebook? Are these people, and you, and you can get that dialed in exactly. Uh, and, and I guess where I see variance a lot of times, our clients will say, well, you know, we're a law firm. We don't need to be on Facebook and we don't need to be on Twitter. We need to be on LinkedIn because that's where everybody is. And for any business to believe that none of their clients use Facebook to consume information, I think is crazy. I would, I would almost say I'll give you $1,000 if you've got more than 100 clients and you're going to tell me that nobody that you do business with uses Facebook, and I'll bet you. <laughs> I mean, that adamant about it, people use these tools. They're out there. So at least making your content available. If you want to follow me that way, we're posting it and we're doing it and we're having it out there. But I hear that all the time, you know, oh, our clients don't use that tool. Come on. <laughs> I just have a question. Yes. Did you say, excuse me. Did $1, you say. $1,000? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> did you say that um, if you have a list of email addresses that you can figure out which medium they are using? There are pending services that do that. So if you, you know, if you're large enough and, and, and can pay that, you know, you can go out there and you can send in the email list and it will say, here's all the social media networks that these things are on. Yes. I'll get more information about that and put it up on our meetup. Because, uh, yeah, you can figure that out real fast. You don't need to survey people. You can just append it and say, okay, the email ma matches this, 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 this. Now, the problem with a match like that is you don't know their level of engagement. They might have set up a Facebook account one day and never been back since. So, but it would give you an idea that they do have access to that information. Um, the company that I work for, we, we thought about being on Twitter and uh -huh. we were like, should we be on Twitter? And we decided that we did not have the resources at this time to give people what they expect on Twitter. They expect an instantaneous customer service response and we said, we, we can't do that yet. So we monitor twi uh, Twitter, we see what people are saying, we respond with you know, accounts and stuff, but we do not have an official Twitter account because we are not yet ready to give that kind of stuff, and there isn't enough of a demand for us to have that resources dedicated to that yet. Isn't that interesting? So I'm standing here saying, it doesn't matter if you have an account or not. You have to know if people are doing things. Now, when you tweeted, you didn't go to the company's Twitter account. You just set it to the world, and they said, we're here, we're listening, yeah, we'll do it. Okay, very good, huh, yeah. 
<laughs> Pregnant pause there. Um, does it, has anybody had any um, workings with the Talent Me on Facebook as of yet that just apparently came out as a new app? I got an invite to it this morning. The what? Talent Me, me it's called. It shows up. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> this morning is too fast for me. That's scary. Darn. Uh, <laughs> that was talent. so 27 seconds ago. Yeah. <laughs> Talent.me, it's just a, an attempt to sort of uh, loop a little bit of the LinkedIn kind of features into Facebook. And it'll be interesting to see where it goes. I think right now people that are using LinkedIn are probably not going to switch all their eggs into the talent.me basket. So, Right, right, right. You well, know, no, these yes. things pop up all the time. I mean, branch in, talent me. I see all the, I'm going, why are these people trying to reinvent what's already out there? And I don't even know who these people are that I get these invites from. <laughs> <laughs> is it a part of Facebook or is it a, it is an app on Facebook. Right. Right. Uh huh. Hi, can you speak to the um, to the benefits of SEO placement by having multiple profiles across social media? Ah, that is a whole topic that we are going to uh, cover later in the year about how SEO is impacted uh, through your use of social media. Um, the search engines like like that you have that. I don't know what part of the algorithm. I haven't looked. Uh, but the more, here's, here's what I'll say to that in general. The more you're out there and the more conversation you're generating and the more engagement that you're getting, the more inbound links you're going to have to your website and probably the more useful information you're publishing. So your site saturation, the number of pages that you've got indexed on the search engine should continue to escalate. The number of inbound links that you receive by building community around your brand and engaging people ought to escalate. And both of those things are critical to continuing to maintain or achieve higher SEO. <laughs> All right, very good. So we, we talked a little bit about this. Um, so is Meetup a social media site? Does it, does it, meet, the, does it meet the criteria? Web-based and mobile technology to turn communication into interactive dialogue. I'm going to say yes, it does it, but it's not quite as easy. There's forums on Meetup where you can go do things uh, and, and post discussion chains. Um, is a blog, is a blog a social media site? If you allow comments. So why in the world would somebody make a blog post and not allow comments? Spam, okay. So, so cut it off and, and you know, people might spam it. I, 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 you know, it's a pain, but I think you still have to invite the comments from the other people. Uh, but it is a drag. We get uh, tons of spam comments on our blog all the time. Yes? If you're just a content creator, like yes. Seth Godin, you don't allow comments. Okay. All right. Now, shouldn't a person allow comments? If I'm the most brilliant person in the, on the planet and I'm putting out great things, wouldn't it be neat to have a community of people that all talk about the, the wonderful things I'm saying? You know, just because he doesn't, I don't know if that's a good or bad idea. I, I would even argue that what Seth Godin's doing, it's not really even a blog. It's just kind of a website with ideas. Yes. Yeah, it's static. But it would be neat to say how, I mean, huge following. Why not read what people have to say about this? It would be more engaging for all of us if that occurred. So I'm going to say that a blog's social media to some degree and you can create this on your website and have this interaction and say what are we doing right please comment on this yes you know i i don't think it's up to seth godin to determine who's going to comment on his site because you just go to www.commentonsethgodin.com and there you go so people have found a way right they obviously want to do it he doesn't want to deal with it. Yeah. <laughs> and so, you know, people go have the conversation away from him. And that might be okay for him. He's doing all right, you know. <laughs> you know, I feel like not only do I try to market to my clients, but I also have to market directly to Google. 
and you know it's frustrating because it's kind of like my clients aren't going to read this but if i want to get higher up in the ratings i got to market to google so i think it's a I, I think what what happens is it's a combination of saying let's achieve both let's have good communication with our clients but let's be aware of how it's going to get the most penetration out there uh, and score the highest, right? And that is a necessary evil. If I'm shouting in a cave, hey, I can be shouting the greatest thing in the world. If nobody hears it, it doesn't matter. So there is that, that catch-22 to some degree. Um, so, yeah, very good. Uh, review sites, Yelp. Is Yelp social media? Sure Yelp is. Foursquare is. People can go in and they can comment on things and they can check in and there's interactive dialogue. <laughs>